Hi everybody, it's great to be back here again. It's Mars Friday, Parshat Shemot. We are beginning a new book of the Torah. And I want to just focus today, I mean, the, if we look at the um, name of our portion, Shemot, and the name of the whole book of the Torah, Exodus, but in Hebrew we don't call it Exodus, in Hebrew we call it Shemot. Shemot means names. And we know that names are so powerful, and um, there's no, you know, I think if we think about a name of something, like for example in Israel now, um, there's a discussion, they gave one name for the, the war going on in Gaza, called Charavot Barzel, the, the um, iron swords, and um, swords, and they're thinking, of, you know, it's been going on now, a discussion to rename, you know, they want to make a rename, uh, to rename the war exactly. And there are different um, suggestions that are being suggested, and um, some people told it, Mashiv HaRuach, to return the spirit, um, the war of of, of the war of the, um, of Simchat Torah, etc. So interesting how you know we all know the name is so important, and here we had a very special um, happy event in our family on Shabbat. We another grandson of ours was born to my daughter Merav and her husband Roi. Now that's a fifth child. We're so excited about that, of course. And and this Shabbat we're going to have the Brit. We're having this celebration, the whole family together here at Itzama. And it's so, so happy, um, you know, so happy. We're extremely excited about that. And obviously on the circumcision, a name is going to be given for the child. Now, if we think about it, wouldn't it make more sense that a person, you know, only after <laughs> a person um, lives their life, you know, one, one way of looking, looking at the pictures, at the end of a person's life, Okay, now we can give a name to this to this person that came to the world. Now we know what, more about what that person was like and and who that person was, because um, when a person is just born, no one knows what's what's behind that name, what's going to what's going what's going to become of that person. Correct. So that's always a great question. How do we give a name to a child and we don't know what's going to become of the child yet? Only at the end of a person's life. When a person leaves the world, then we look back, oh, let's name this child after that, that great individual. As we know, we have a whole book of the Bible, so many great names to name, to, give, to find a name for somebody. So um, the question is, you know, how do we do such a thing? You know, giving a name to a child without, you know, really, what are we just playing like a, a guess game, you know, <laughs> playing darts, throwing it and hoping we're going to hit the target? Um, but in reality, you know, our rabbis bring down, it's brought down the Ochaim HaKadosh, that a name is, that a parents give, it's, it's literally, it's prophetic when a parents have that ability to find a name for a child. And we see later on how they live up to the name and how there's so much behind the name. So there's obviously a lot of spirituality behind that concept, which is extremely interesting to, to think about. And, um, and I'm sure you all can bring examples down of people you know that have a name and they live up to that name which is uh, for sure, um, you know, a deep, a deep insight into it. But if we think about it in the beginning of the Torah, you know, the first place a name comes up is literally, I, know, I don't know if people re realize this, is it, when it comes to the, not giving a name to a person, but a name of the rivers. There were four rivers that came out of the Garden of Eden. And the first river was called Pishon, Shema Nahal Rishon. It says the, the name of the first river, um, and it uses here the name. That's the first time name is mentioned, um, which is fascinating relating to the river. And I was thinking about like, why would the name, which is such a powerful thing, be mentioned in, in relation with a river, the first time of coming out of the Garden, Garden, the Garden of Eden? But in reality, I think a great understanding of, of, of what a name really is, is, is potential. A name reflects in a great way the potential of a human being. Um, as a matter of fact, the numerical value of Shem, Shin is 300, and Mem is 40. 340 is the same numerical value as Sefer. Sefer meaning Samach Peresh, meaning um, a book. Obviously, a person's name, or a book, <laughs> it's like a story, right? A story of a person's life, a sapel, to, to tell about a person's life. A name reflects a whole story, a whole life behind that name, but again in potential form, as we say. So we're talking about giving a name to somebody 
it's, we're revealing potential. And here, I want to connect it to the rivers of, of Eden. The first time the name is mentioned is that God is really saying, is sending out a spiritual um, soul that's coming from the upper worlds. And that soul is so powerful with tremendous potential because that, that soul is coming from God himself. And in reality, every human being born is part of God, right? We literally, as we say, chelik elokim imal, our soul is a part of God. The word for soul is nishama. And in the word nishama, nun shim, memhei, shame, right? You have a shame in there, the name. A person's name reflects on that soul. And therefore, it's so clear that the um, name of something is potential, that God, the light of God is there, the, the abundance is there, that potential is there. We have to uh, live up to that potential by making a vessel in order to, to be able to absorb all that amazing spiritual light that's coming from the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden is like, of course, represents the spiritual worlds, the upper worlds, and that energy we have to bring into our lives and unravel that, that soul of ours and let it, let it meet its potential. There's a beautiful expression brought down by Rashi. Rashi in the book of Ecclesiastics, says so something fascinating. And he brings down, and he says, regarding the verse, Tov, Shem, Shem, and Tov, good is an, um, better is a name than good oil, V'yom HaMavet, and the day of death, and when a person is born, this is brought down in Ecclesiastics, chapter 7, verse 1, Rashi says, Nolda Miriam, Ena Kol Yodima, right? um, Mahi, Mahi, when Miriam is born, for example, Name Miriam, referring to Miriam in the Bible. No one knows who she is when the person is born. Only when she dies, what happens? The clouds, um, sorry, the the bear, the um, spring disappears, and everyone says, "Oh, the 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 um, well of Miriam disappeared." We know when the 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 well was around here in her merit. The same thing regarding Aaron when he passes away. The the clouds of glory disappeared. When Moshe Rabbeinu passes away, um, Rashi says the man stopped falling. The manna from the heavens. So we see when a person's at the, only at the end of a person's life, and when the, the vacuum that he leaves in this world, and when he's gone, and people pay attention to to the great person that that person was, because we see how he meted out his potential in the world. So then we actually realize the meaning of a name. It really becomes to it has this tremendous uh, mashmut understanding later on. So. In reality, to summary, summarize what we're saying, a name is a potential. And, and we have to live up to that potential in this world. And that's our spiritual entity, and which is reflected through the name, which is so powerful. In this week's portion, that is all about names, <laughs> um, is very interesting in that it opens up with these are the names of the, of the children of Israel, like, right, that are coming to Egypt and mentioning the names of, of the tribes. Just at the end of last week's portion in the book of um, Bereshit, we saw how each child was blessed with their special name and how it's connected to their, to their essence, who they are. And it continues. We look in, in this week's portion in, in chapter, the first chapter, in verse number 15, it talks about how the name of the midwives, Shema Chat Shifra, Shema Hashinit Pu'ah, right? It mentions also names. So we see also another mentioning of names in the portion. But it's very interesting. Um, when it comes to talking about Moshe Rabbeinu, um, our leader, what does it say? It says, Moshe Rabbeinu comes from the house of, of the Levites, and he ta- I'm sorry, <laughs> Moshe Rabbeinu's father, right? He, he's a man from the house of the Levites, and he comes and he takes a woman from the house of the Levites. And the name is not mentioned, it doesn't say who these people are, the um, Yocheved and Miriam, <coughs> I'm sorry, Yocheved and Amram, um, are not mentioned over here. Right, which is very, very interesting. Why aren't they mentioned the parents of Moshe Rabbeinu? Not only that, it says, and she saw the mother of, of it says, Vatal Yisha, and she became pregnant, she, Vateled Ben, and she said she gave birth, and she saw um, that he showed that he was, a, he was good, and she hid him for three months. But it doesn't, again, mention his name. Usually at the Brit, they make a name for the child, so it doesn't mention the name. And she couldn't hide him anymore, and then she obviously brings him to the, we all know, she places the child um, basuf al fatayo. She puts him at the, in the suf in the reeds by the by the river. So here, we would expect more than anything, 
parents we mentioned, Moshe Rabbeinu mentioned by birth, but no, the name given to Moshe Rabbeinu slowly unravels. <laughs> and um, as we see in verse number 10 in chapter 2, where it says that Paro's daughter gives a name to Moshe and she calls him Moshe Rabbeinu because I drew him out of the water. Now here it's also very interesting is that if we look at the name, it says, Kimen Amayi Meshitu, that I drew him out of the water. In reality, it would make more sense to call Moshe Rabbeinu, if that's the case. Nimsha, in Hebrew, means to be something, something that was drawn out, should be called Nimsha. But why is he called Moshe? It means to draw out, that he draws out. But he didn't draw himself out of the water, it was Paro's daughter that, that did so. So the name doesn't seem to fit. And here we see again, as we said before, all names have that spiritual... Um, potential that's being revealed. Moshe Rabbeinu later becomes the leader of Israel, right? Our great prophet and the leader of, of the nation of Israel, of, of the greatest leader of all times. Obviously, he's the one who, who's involved in taking us out and, and drawing us out, bringing you know, the nation of Israel out of slavery and all that. So he, his real potential wasn't to be something that was a, um, a to, be, to be drawn out, but to draw others out, right? To live up to that potential that he had. So it's fascinating that there was prophecy because Paro, she stumbled the daughter of Paro, she really called him a different name, but nevertheless she, he was called Moshe, to living up to what his potential would be in the future. And when it goes on, mentioning a portion of names, um, it's brought down where Moshe Rabbeinu has a son, he, right, Gilshon, he calls him Gilshon because he was a um, stranger in El Tznochia, we had two sons of course, Moshe Rabbeinu, but if we go on, we see others. When is the other? At the end of the portion, we also see the um, we see that name being mentioned. But beforehand, Moshe Rabbeinu says something in here. It's very fascinating. Not a name regarding a person, but name reference to God. Moshe Rabbeinu brings down in, in verse 13 in chapter 3, Moshe Rabbeinu says to God, you know, I'm going to come to the people of Israel, and I'm going to say to them, God has sent me, they're going to say to him, what's his name? What am I going to say? What's, what's God's name? What do I say? So God says, you know, that's the name, and then later on he also goes on, he adds the second name is Shem by saying, you know, God, by saying, um, God said, God, in verse number 15, God says also, in addition, the God, the, the, you know, Hashem, the, the, the God of your fathers, I, um, Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob, sent you, and this is my name, and this is my memory forever. So we see over here that Moshe Rabbeinu requesting, again, um, what name to bring to the people of Israel, and then, Finally, at the end of the portion, we see again the concept of name coming up. Since I came to Paro, to, to talk in your name, it became worse for the nation, not better. You didn't save your nation. So it's really fascinating from the beginning of the portion to the end. We see it's all about names. And even the section where Moshe Rabbeinu, whose name is not mentioned, um, it, you know, it. It, it, that's also connected to name, the fact that it's not mentioned, we're asking the question. Um, and I also should mention one of the section by the sne, by the burning bush. <coughs> there we see Moshe Rabbeinu's name is not mentioned only once, but God says to Moshe Moshe twice mentioning his name, which is also, of course, a very interesting phenomenon of its own right. But anyway, what I wanted to show here in the portion, which is that the name is very, very um, intrinsic to the portion, extremely connected, as we see from the beginning to the end and the middle, it's all about names or anonymous section <laughs> that we spoke about. But putting this all together, the, um, as we said, a name is a potential. Moshe Rabbeinu, who's reflecting um, that leadership of Israel, the greatest prophet of all times, and the fact that regarding his birth, his name is not mentioned, is exactly this point, I think is one of the points that Cho is trying to stress, <coughs> is that a person, in reality, a person can be given a good name, and, but at the end of the day, as we all know, that is potential, our great name, that a person can be given a super name, but at the end of the day, if he does not work in this world and meet out his potential, so that name will just remain a name, you know, an anonymous name at the end of the day. We have to meet the potential. Moshe Rabbeinu, as he began to unfold, when he was called to his duty, 
as a leader there, God is saying, Moshe, Moshe, now you are living up to your name at this point as you begin your return you know, to, to, to Egypt to take your people out. And God giving him that message. So here we see beginning to live up to his potential. And that's when he's earning his name. It's in reality when he's earning his name so powerfully. So we see that this is a very, extremely important a message that we're, we're getting from the portion in regarding those names. Um, when a person, well, I'll, I'll try to bring a, another example here, and you know, which we should be mentioned as well, um, because here we have to realize when it's regarding the creator of the universe. You know, obviously there are so many names. The one of the um, the Mishnah brings down in in Sota, one of the tractates, that when Israel went out to battle. I may actually quote, maybe I should really quote the mission itself, and I want to quickly read that to you all. The mission talks about a Mashuach Milchama, a priest that his, his job was when they went out to battle to strengthen the priests, to strengthen the nation. And he would speak to the nation, and it says, He would speak in Hebrew. And he would say, and brings down the verse explaining the Mishnah in the Torah when, when they're when they, when they going to battle. So it, it has to be this priest that's going to talk to him. What does he say? And he says, listen, Israel, um, you are going to be fighting against your enemies, not against your brethren. And it brings examples. And then it says, and I want to read at this moment the um, last section. It says, it says, It says, you know, you're different than the nations. And it brings down examples of Goliath, of, of Goliath, how they fell, and the Ammon, and the, Am- and Amon, the Ammonites. And, but it says, you're different than the nations of the world, that God goes with you in battle. And the, the Mishnah explains that, this is the, when the Aaron, the ark would go out with Israel in battle. And the Talmud brings down that within the ark were the 70 names of God, God's 70 names. In addition, God's Shema Mephorash, God's um, 72 letter name, which is a name in a special way of pronouncing it. They pronounce it in the, the priests only knew how to do that. They pronounce it in the temple. There are different explanations of what that is exactly. But here, in reality, the 70 names of Hashem went to us in battle against our enemies. It was in, inside the ark itself. What does that mean? And here, and this is connected to what I, what I wanted to say before, is that the, every person is a part, his soul is part of God. At the end of the day, our souls is a chilek elokim imam. And when we're revealing, when we're discovering our potential, when in reality we're discovering the God within us, because our, when we live out to our utmost potential and the lights within us that, that God gave us, an amazing ability to do so many so much good in the world so we live up to that we're revealing more and more God within us that's exactly what's happening we're revealing that so God is trying to explain now he's walking when we go into battle God's 70 names every human being and the 70 reflects to the the nations of the world as well (coughs) there is potential to do good and God it reflects the 70 nations as well and the Shema Miforash, God's special name is there as well. Particularly referring to the, to the nation of Israel. Is that we as, as a nation, when we go to battle, we want to rectify the world and we want to, and we're doing good in this world as we rectify and eradicate evil in order to allow the humanity to reach its utmost potential, to reach it's inner essence of who we're part of God, that God created us, and we have we can live up to our name in a good way, every individual, every human being. And that's this lesson of the Mishnah. I mean, and the same thing here, mentioned in this week's portion as well, where Paro says to Moshe Rabbeinu, who's this God of yours that I should you know, listen, etc. So we see that it's exactly the point here. When someone doesn't know who God is, they don't know who the name is, they don't know... They, they disconnect, they don't, they're not living up to their potential, they're doing the opposite. 
Paro means oref, the back of your neck, the turning the backs to God. So all evil stems from not knowing God, not knowing the names of God, which the revelation. So when God, so when God's names are within our ark as we go to battle, it's a reflection on, on rectifying the world, meeting the potential. So even when doing the most difficult things, have to go to battle, endangering lives and having to take lives in order to bring true goodness to the world, true and happiness into the world, to, to meet potential, to allow the potential of tikkun olam to rectify the world. We, we walk with Hashem's names within out in the battlefield. And that's, you know, such a very powerful, such a powerful expression here. And that's really the lesson of Shemot, the book of Shemot, the nation of Israel being born in Egypt, in such a dark world, but coming out of this bondage, of this terrible situation, in order to rectify, to bring light, to bring the divine light, and to live up to our name as the people of Israel, and to rectify the entire world. Very, very deep concept. Anyway, Shabbat Shalom. Let us live up to our name. Who we are, the people of Israel, as we will succeed in battle against this evil force and allow the world to, re- the world to be rectified. And all those who are, who are going against Israel, they're not living up to their potential. They're following evil. Those who walk with Israel, we know they're on the right side of the map. And God will walk with them. And God willing, we will see great things ahead. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.